Zombies, zombies, zombies. Welcome to the internet where everything is zombies. We've got zombie people, zombie sharks, cranberry zombies, even plants versus zombies. But you know what I haven't seen yet? A zombie T-Rex. Hi folks, my name is Adam and I like to make tiny nerdy things. And today, I made a zombie T-Rex. Now, if you're anything like me, then I'm sorry, that's pretty rough. But it also means you've probably been bombarded lately with zombies, specifically zombie sharks. Now, a couple of months ago, a Jack Jack creator made a zombie shark in a swimming pool, and it's amazing. Seriously, if you haven't seen it yet, go check it out. And while you're there, check out their entire channel, because they have the Midas touch, and everything they do is gold. Coincidentally, as recording this video, 32 million other people also thought it was amazing, and it went hella viral. So of course, all we sculptors and crafters of YouTube thought, hey, that's neat, I want to do that too. And so we did. I, of course, not wanting to miss out on that sweet, sweet zombie making time, decided to do it as well. But I wanted to give something else a shot, so I wanted everyone's favorite childhood dinosaur, the T-Rex. And that brings us to this point, which has me dropping some ball bearings into eye sockets and then giving him some angry little eyelids. And now that I've got the general shape of the head sorted out, I'm going to mount the top and bottom jaws onto a couple pieces of wire so that I can mount it into my handy little sculpting vise. I've squished a tiny bit of clay in between the two jaws to help hold them together, and then I can add that little bit of flesh that connects the two bits of the mouth. Now one issue that I encountered was realizing just how much texture our Dino Boy has and how to go about adding that detail without losing my mind. Ideally, I want the same sort of texture as the ball stylus, but, uh, reversed. To that end, I'm going to take a negative mold using a couple different size circles in a rounded ball of clay, which, once baked, should let me get a pretty good, pretty random looking texture without having to add individual beads all over the entire surface. Now obviously, there will be some missing textures, but any of the really obvious spots, I can always just take the skin away, cause, you know, zombies. With the face textured, I can add the teeth, which are pre-baked little spiky wormy dealies that I'll jam into place, taking him from a geriatric dino dad to a spooky toothosaurus. Finally, to highlight the scaly texture, I'll add some of those dino pimples that you seem to see all over our prehistoric chickens. Now I know at the moment he looks a lot like a prepubescent teen, but once it's painted, though, his little spots will be a lot less noticeable. And then we're on to the cutting. This was a bit nerve-wracking, since it's kind of hard to undo if you go a bit overboard, so I tried to keep it to mostly surface damage. I also left some pretty big holes in his face while sculpting, since I knew ahead of time how I wanted the damage to look, and trying to remove those large chunks without deforming the thinner clay around the face would have been pretty tricky. Using my ball stylus, I'll add some texture into the gaps, poking indents and creating a little bit of muscle striation, and then I'll add some tendons and stretches over the larger holes before moving on to the other side of the head. As far as the rest of the body is concerned, he's going to have an awful lot of weight bearing over his little stumpy legs, and I want to make sure that the armature underneath is good and sturdy. I've got some triple wound wire that will work for the legs, and a little double wound wire will be his spine. I've also added some longer wire into his head so that I can wrap it around the spine and know it's not going to fall off. After all, if you're going to do something, you may as well overdo something. I've also got some aluminium foil to help bulk up the body, and I would have liked to have been able to use a little bit more, but I know that I'm going to want his belly to have some big gaping cavities in it, so I'm going to have to use a lot of clay so that I can remove clay later. Then it's just a case of building up his body in thin layers, starting with nice sticky cause clay, then working up to thicker layers of super sculpey. Once I've got that thick body we all yearn for, I can start adding strategic wormy dealies along the length of his body to give him those sought after skin folds. Imagine, if you will, a prehistoric Sharpe puppy. Then all that's left is to add the T-Rex turkey neck and give his shapely legs a little bit more shape and make his spine a tiny bit more noticeable. Then it's back to my texture stamp to give the entirety of his body a more scaly appearance and once that's done, I'll use my silicone shaper to cut some more grooves and shapes into his skin. And it's just a case of waving my hand around anxiously for a while, trying to figure out how not to ruin hours of hard work. Fortunately, if you can make it in the first place, the worst that can happen is you have to make it again. So never be afraid to cut things up. All of the missing skin sections follow the same pattern. First, I'll cut the shape out using my scalpel, 
Then use the flat end of my sculpting tool to separate the layers of clay so that it looks more like skin. Then depending on where the cut is, I'll use the ball stylus to add muscle striation or gnarly looking fiber. This is where that extra thick T-Rex beer belly comes into play since I'm going to be carving out space for his ribs as well as adding a big cavity to have some entrails hanging out. The other side will be a tiny bit more exposed so that I can have the upper section of his ribs poking out. I uh, don't know what sort of texture I was going for here, but I figured that as long as it looked kind of gross, it would work well for the underlying fleshy bits. It's all going to be covered by ribs anyways, so exact anatomic perfection wasn't my goal here. Speaking of ribs, here they are. They're just pre-baked noodles that I flattened and curved and they just kind of get jammed into place. A small worm of clay on top will connect all the ribs and then I'll add a couple of adorable little vertebral protuberances along his spine. And then it's time to add the bits of tendon and flesh that'll be sticking to the bones and the damaged sections of the skin. It's entirely accidental that this clay was pink. Apparently there was a bit of red clay stuck to my gray when I started kneading it and it turned into this awful but appropriate color. It's kind of like a super grisly version of accidentally washing a red sock with your white shirts. Then with everything baked and locked in place, I can get started on the tail. Now naturally I'm going to start with a big thick wormy dealy, cut it down the length, and then stick it onto the armature I have poking out the back. Once that's been blended into the rest of the body, I can crack out my trusty little cheaters tool and add in my texture. I'll carve out a few more sections of the tail so that I can add in some more adorable little vertebrae, then use a little bit more of pink gum to connect all the muscle and tissue. Then it's time to make my tiny T-Rex arms. Now if there's any paleontologists out there watching, why do T-Rex have arms? Like are they for balance? Are they intended to help scratch a very specific part of the T-Rex body? Are they used to throw prehistoric gang signs? I want to know, I need to know, so let me know in the comments below. Now at this point there are only two things left to do. The first will be rolling out a nice big chunky boy tongue. And second we'll be making his feet. Claws? Talons? Uh, leg hands. These consist of three big toes that get blended together before a set of pointy toenails will get stabbed into place. Before it all gets textured using that texture stamp and then the silicone shaper will add some more sort of cuts and wrinkles into it and I can do my final cut to reveal a little bit of muscle on the foot. Then obviously because he's gonna have two feet I did the other side and then threw it in for a final bake. I'm gonna be doing the majority of the painting using washes so I need to prime them with a nice white base coat. Now when I say that I'll be painting with washes, what I mean is that I'm going to make some really thin, very flowy paints that will allow the underlying colors to show through. Now to make these washes, I'll combine some matte medium, a little bit of flow improver, whatever color I'm after, and a little bit of water. Because the acrylic paint is thinned out, it won't be nearly as vibrant as it dries and the flow improver will help it pull in cracks and recesses, giving me easy shading and making it appear as if I have any idea what I'm doing. Once I've covered all the exposed skin with the first layer of red, I'll add a bit of terracotta to the wash to darken it and then go over everything again. Of course you could stop after this step and you'd be left with a pretty spooky looking dilapidated albinosaurus. But for my efforts, I'm going to keep going and paint his belly with a sandy beigey wash. I'll apply this pretty liberally to his undercarriage, taking care not to get it into any of the already painted sections before starting on the upper half. Now this green is pretty green, and I don't want it to be this green, but I'm committed to this green, so I kind of have to keep going. Fortunately, I want him to be kind of green, and it should be pretty easy to dull that green down by adding additional washes over top to bring the saturation way down until it's sort of a muddy military green. Finally, I'll dry brush everything using a little bit of bone white and silver to highlight the edges and give them a little bit of that sassy shine you'd expect from a zombified T-Rex. Then the final touches will be painting all of the bone sections... bone? Then I'll repaint the tongue with a more tongue appropriate pink and accompanying wash before painting all of his teeth a nice off-white. 
I'd also like all the tendons and strands of muscle to stand out a little bit better, so I'm gonna go over all of them with a little bit of pink paint. Now, everybody knows that zombies have cataracts, so naturally I'm gonna paint his eyes white. And then the absolute final stage will be coating all those exposed sections with a gloss varnish to give it that extra bit of uh, grossness. I wanted to make a relatively simple base since I felt like the big spooky zombie T-Rex is kind of the star of the show. So I think that a simple, small base will be perfect. I've got a bunch of leftover chunks of XPS foam that I can roughly cut down to size and shape, and then I can fill all the gaps with gap filler. And once that dries, I can add the rocky texture using a rock. Now make sure you write that down, use gap filler to fill gap, and use rock to add rock texture. I'm using washes again here, so I'll prime my base with gesso before applying a dark gray wash over top and highlighting with a few different browns. I wanted this to look kind of like a rocky forest path, so I'll apply some mud down the center before sprinkling over various bits of dirt and detritus. I've got some choice pebbles that match the color of the painted rock and some dark green flonk will give it a bit of a mossy appearance. Finally, because I can't help myself, I'll also add a few tufts of static grass. Then the only thing left to do is glue the T-Rex in place, and we're on to our glamour shots. As always, a massive thank you to my newest patrons, Stephen, Edward Pennon, Molly Smith, Alex Scott, Chris Small, Eliver Bruges, Captain Carwash, Killer Tofu, Anthony Ford, Rebecca Leahy, and Jean-Paul Comers. You join the rank of the fabled few who make these videos possible. Now, if you liked my take on a zombie T-Rex, let me know in the comments below and consider subscribing. We just passed our 100,000 subscriber mark, and that's just neato burrito. So thank you to each and every one of you that watches these silly videos. Of course, liking and sharing these videos makes all the difference, so don't be shy. Share this with everyone you know. Otherwise, we'll uh, see you next week. Cheers.